morning. Today is a mixture of sunshine and clouds. Don't know if you can see much outside. Um, you can hear the sheep bleating away in the field behind me again. The farmers just turned up and they're all going crazy. I had looked at the map last night and thought, oh, it's eight miles to Leicester. I can be there by lunchtime. What I forgot to notice was the fact that there are 20 locks between here and Leicester. About 20 locks. I'm at Newton Harcourt. So <laughs> a lock takes about a mile of time, a quarter of an hour, 10 minutes to, to a quarter of an hour to go through. Especially when you're on your own, it takes a bit longer, single-handed. So I would estimate that I'm not going to get to Leicester until late afternoon, even if I press on and get there today. Uh, I may not do that. I may just uh, go to the outskirts, to Glen, Glen Parver or somewhere like that, and stop there for the night uh, and go through the centre of the town tomorrow. Uh, if I had a crew with me, it would be quicker, but that's the way it goes. Um, I don't know what it's going to look like coming into Leicester, but I'll show you as we go. It could be quite interesting. Let's see. Well, goodbye sheep, we're off. Thank God you didn't make all that noise last night. Well, we've gone through, pretty much, through Newton Harcourt. Um, this is the last bridge in the village. Um, let's avoid that log sticking into the canal here. And then uh, we go down three locks uh, at the western side of the village and we're out into the countryside uh, approaching the Leicester suburbs then. So we're just heading off down into Leicester. I don't know how far I'm going to get today, uh, but I'm aiming to get to Glen Parver or somewhere like that. So we'll just chug on, get as far as we can. And uh, fortunately these locks are open and they're not chained up. The previous flight was chained up to conserve water. These ones they've left. Uh, so we can just go straight through them ourselves, I hope. Let's find out. I've disturbed the green woodpecker who chacked noisily at me and then has just flown away over the lock cottage. Now sadly this lock has been left empty and open so I'm going to have to turn it round. Let's just come into the lock mooring, lay by, and tie off and get the lock turned round. Plenty of water in the canal here, it's spilling over the spillway so Filling the lock isn't going to uh, empty this section of the canal at all. Now I've got to turn the lock around, which is going to take a good five minutes at least. Slow me down. If I had a crew, I'd send them running on down to the next lock, down there, and they would uh, check there's no boat coming up and turn that lock around for me as well. But as I don't, I'm going to have to basically do it all myself and as I get to each lock, which takes a lot longer. So that's Newton top lock. Let's turn it round. Right, what I've done is I've walked across the uh, top gate because that's the only way across the lock here. At many places that will be the only way across. Sometimes there's a bridge. And now I'm closing the bottom gate. Hopefully they'll stay closed. Sometimes they won't. The other one will swing open. And if that happens, you end up running around the lock, closing each gate. And the only way to keep them shut is to open one of the top paddles a little bit to provide some water pressure to hold the gates shut. But uh, here, fortunately, they are closing enough that when I do gently open the top paddles, the uh, pressure will close the gates for me. And the rule here is always open the ground paddles first, especially when you're going up the lock. And then you open the gate paddles. So I'll open it a little bit just to provide enough pressure to close the bottom gates. And you can see the water flowing into the lock there and the gate is gently shut by itself. Now you wind it all the way. And you walk across and do the other side. Even despite me uh, opening all six of the paddles on the lock, there's still water going over the spillway, which would indicate that there's plenty of water in this section of the canal. Lock's filling up nicely now. And in a minute, I'll be able to open the gate and drive the boat in. Then I've got to empty the lock again into the next pound. 
open the bottom gates, drive out, tie off, close the bottom gates, and then I can move on to the next lock. It's a painstaking process on your own, and if you have to turn every lock round, it's about 20 minutes per lock, especially with these big, wide locks. This is the lock cottage at Newton Top Lock, and this beautiful old enamel sign. Well, that first lock took me half an hour. Huh. Let's hope this second one isn't quite as slow. Looks like the bottom gates are open on this one as well. So I've got to turn it round too. Well, this must be as a result of the recent rains we've been having, the lock's full and uh, the water's over the tops of the top gates. Well, it saved me a lot of time because all I've had to do here is uh, just open the gate and drive in. I haven't had to turn the lock around, which is uh, a good five minutes at least. I'm really pleased about that. It saved me a lot of time. I can just edge the boat in and then empty the lock and that saved me a lot of time. This is top half mile lock. Right, well I've just gone down the three locks at Newton Harcourt and it took me an hour to get down them. It's the first time I've had to do this kind of work really since, um, since Napton on the Hill on the Oxford Canal. Um, the first lock was half an hour, it was completely empty, I had to turn it round on my own. Uh, the last two took half an hour between them, so three locks plus the pounds in between in an hour. It's not great, but it's kind of three miles an hour. It's about right, really. Oh. You count a lock as a mile, so you count your distance on the canal in lock miles. And on we go. Um, it's not too far to the next one now. If you look along here, you can see this wooden piling. And uh, CRT have put the wooden piling in in between the old bank and the canal. So actually it's about two feet out from the old um, concrete piling, which has narrowed the canal a little. And uh, they've planted all what's growing in between here. See, you can just see the old bank there behind, the, uh, behind this wooden piling. There it is. And already it's starting to go wobbly. It's not straight and the piles are starting to rot, rot the wooden posts. And they've planted these uh, reeds in, in the gap. I just don't understand it. I really, they won't stay there, they'll grow out. And then they'll look like this in a couple of years time. Is that what you want, CRT? Is that what you're trying to achieve? Do you want the whole canal to be completely silted up and say, oh, we can't maintain it. It's uh, it's no longer a statutory navigation. Really? Is that what you're going to do? You see, it probably costs just as much in labour to make this bank, certainly not in materials, but in labour, as it would to fix the bloody bank and take the trees out that are growing in the bank. If the CRT would think they're going to have to maintain this new thing, it's growing out already. Look at this. I mean, is this really what you want? Are you trying to block the canal? Because that's what it looks like from here. You have to remember it's a canal. The wildlife is here because it's a canal. And the wildlife would still be here if you maintain the bank properly. Instead of narrowing the canal, with this uh, silly new living bank. It's narrow enough, is it? It's a wide canal. Can you imagine two wide beam boats passing here? It's supposed to be a wide beam canal. It's not that wide, really. Okay, so we're coming up to bottom half mile lock now. Rant over, time to get working again. Right, we've negotiated the locks down to, um, where are we? Bumblebee lock lock number 29 and we're approaching uh, Kilby Bridge which is the first of the little villages that have been absorbed into the outskirts of Leicester. So we're nearly in, what well, we're coming into Leicester and we've done a good eight locks already out of the 20 down into Leicester, more than 20. Um, but there is a sanitary station at Kilby Bridge and that is where I'm planning on stopping after being going for uh, solid for a good two and a half hours. Um, I'm going to empty the toilet cassette because it's getting quite full. 
and you should never ever pass up on a chance to empty your toilet cassette because a full toilet cassette means you can't go and that's not pleasant. A bit worried about the low bridge here in the canopy. I'm going to take it very cautiously through here. I think we'll clear it, but I'm going to be very careful. Well, I'm at the Kilby Bridge uh, Sanitary Station and uh, quite a clean LSAN here, but I've had to tie off against this uh, CRT workboat because there's nowhere else to tie up. So um, it's a novel one for me. I'm tied up against this crane boat. Teamed up with these two vintage river cruisers, 1960s fiberglass river cruisers. And between us, we're going through the locks three at a time. I'm running on ahead and getting locks ready and then closing up and opening the bottom paddles and then jumping on. And they're shutting the locks up behind. And between us, we're cracking on. So I might make Leicester. I might make Leicester Town Centre this afternoon. That would be nice. Now we're coming into the South Wigston area of Leicester. Suburb. We pass lots of lovely, pretty canal side properties here, backing onto the water. None of them have any moorings, but a lot of them have got little boats at the bottom of their gardens. Must be lovely just to sit there and watch the boats go by. So as we come through, we see some old canal side industry here. It's possible that boats used to tie up and unload here and that this was a um, Canal side wharfage area. These buildings look sort of 30s to me, probably. Maybe they're newer, maybe they're 50s. But there would still have been traffic here in the 50s. Yes, that's definitely somewhere boats used to tie up to unload for the uh, warehousing here. And now we've got a new, newish 60s housing estate, possibly 70s even actually. Oh, these are newer, these are much newer. What have we here? Canal side ice cream parlour. Sadly it would appear not. Just some pinched sides. Super narrow here. Lots of overhanging trees. We've just come through um, Bush Lock. So we're heading up towards uh, Knights Bridge, little Bre little Glen Bridge. We've passed South Wigston, and we're heading towards Glen Parva now. In the Leicester suburbs. That's nice, isn't it? There we go, Grand, Grand Junction Canal Company, less than six miles, but a hell of a lot of locks still. At least 10 more locks to do, I think, before we're in Leicester town centre. So on the one side, it looks like this, very rural, dragonflies flitting around. And on the other side, it's Leicester suburbs, modern housing estates. So this is the first instance of lots of fishermen that we found. Well, you can definitely tell we're in a town now because the graffiti factor has gone up by a million. Um, just past some really nice fishermen teaching children how to fish, let's fish or some, let's go fish or something like that. Anyway, they were in a very good mood because I put the boat right into Ticko as I passed them, which is kind of a sensible thing to do. And uh, nice, cheerful, happy fishermen in Leicester so far, which is very nice. It makes a change. Usually they're quite glum. So these are the backs of the houses uh, at the south end of the suburb of Glen Parva, suburb of Leicester. And uh, in a minute we're going to swing round to the, we're heading due west at the moment pretty much, but we're going to swing round to the north and uh, go through the centre of the city, which should be interesting. And these are the first couple of boats I've actually seen moored at the back of houses along here which is nice to see. Narrowboat, centre cockpit narrowboat down there. Again, in the towns you have these gates. They were originally shut to prevent bikes going along the towpath, but now bikes are allowed on the towpath, so they keep them open. Let's have a look at this centre cockpit then. It's 
surprisingly I have a little soft spot for centre cockpit boats. Huge winding hole here and a slipway actually, just west of bridge 98. I can't imagine that slipway ever gets used for anything these days because it's kind of in the middle of a housing estate now. There is a bit of industry here though, X industry. It's really sad to see these X canal side industries in such a state of decline. Well, we've just come through Whetstone Lane Lock and Bridge and uh, we're about to get into the section that turns round to the north. We're heading due west at the moment, but we're about to turn to the north and alongside us on the left, which you can't see, is the river Sense, S-E-N-C-E. And um, yeah, heading up into Leicester in a minute. Leicester proper. Now we're swinging round to the north. And pretty soon the canal becomes the River Saw. So hopefully it'll be a bit deeper and wider. There's a very exciting unprotected weir that we have to traverse. So uh, I'll let you know when we get to that bit. Here's an example of the CRT's uh, reed banking policy narrowing the canals. Can you imagine two wide beams trying to get through here? It's barely big enough for two narrow boats but it is supposed to be a wide canal. I think the reeds have got a little bit out of hand. And you can actually see how shallow it is. Not much traffic's been along here, so the water's lovely and clear. But you can see how shallow it is and the underwater obstructions like uh, logs and what have you. And if you look, I mean, in just a second, it's insanely narrow. I mean, just look at this up ahead. And I'm right on the edge of where most boats would be happy navigating anyway. Look at this, you're going to get weeds in your prop. I'm in the reeds on the left. So the boat's scraping along the reeds on the left hand side. And literally two boats could not pass here. Not without one of them running aground. Ridiculous policy CRT. Really ridiculous. So as we progress down, uh, down towards Leicester, the canal becomes more and more river-like. The water is clearer, you can see almost the bottom in places, and uh, it starts to meander like a river. It's like it's taking forever, but we are getting closer, four miles to Leicester. If there weren't any locks, that would be an hour. With the number of locks there are, that's two hours. And it's now quarter to three. So we'll get there a quarter to five into Leicester. I just wonder if the marina will still be open. Another thing I've noticed is that there's actually a definite flow of water in the direction that we're going, which is, makes sense because we're going down the locks, but there's a lot of water spilling over the weirs uh, either side of the locks, so, and over the gates in some cases. So uh, we're just passing Glen Hills Nature Area. It's Glen Hills Nature Area. And uh, so far, Leicester has been quite rustic. We haven't really seen a lot of big housing estates but I'm sure when we go through the town centre it'll be pretty obvious. Coming up in front of us now is the Saw Valley Way, the A563. Um, we're passing under it, that is the Saw Valley Road Bridge and the next lock is King's Lock and we're passing Aylstone. Uh, when we go through King's Lock we're getting into Aylstone. So we're really cracking on into the suburb, proper suburbs of Leicester now. It's funny actually because we're here, just past the Saw Valley Road Bridge, and uh, I mean you'd think we were going to be able to see houses and what have you, but there's a field full of horses. On the other side, it's meadows. Sure, there are pylons going into into the town, but. You can't see anything, any hint of town. There's a little bit of housing and so on over there to the left, away off in the distance. It is so rural and yet the map makes it look as though you're kind of in the middle of a town. 
often that way with a canal, you can't see the town. As soon as you get down onto the towpath, you come to a different world. Right, we're just approaching Lock 38, King's Lock. And finally, finally um, we see some more Leicester housing. Looks like they've been trying to clear the masses of reeds out of the, uh, the river. Oh, and a shopping trolley, that's quite handy. Reeds, you're making a rod for your own backs here, CRT. You plant them, you're going to have to pull them out where they're not wanted because they will spread everywhere. Just listen to me, I know what I'm talking about. Stop planting reeds, it's stupid. Well, now the water's very clear, there are fish swimming around in it. Uh, we are on the River Saw. Uh, this weed grows up from the bottom and you're going to have to constantly clean your prop because this stuff gets caught in it. I mean, I'm not too bad at the moment, but uh, constantly having to pop it into reverse. But it's lovely to see the clear water here and to be on the River Saw. So we're just going underneath the railway bridge and to our right is the suburb of Aylstone of Leicester. And now you do, you do really feel that you're in a town now, or in a suburbs at least. As we go along the river here, you can see the path that the boat's propellers have cut through the weeds. Some very nice riverside properties here. But again, I haven't seen any moorings for boats. I wonder whether it's even allowed or not. It seems a shame having a, a river frontage property and not having a boat, but they might not be allowed to keep boats. I don't know what the local bylaws are. I do believe in the distance those lights show that we're approaching Leicester City football ground. The stadium. This is how it starts. They plant this hemp bed in between two sets of uh, wooden stakes with a plastic barrier in places. And that is the new bank. And they expect it to be a living bank. And it is a living bank and it grows, it grows out into the canal, look here, already. And then they have to spend ages reed cutting. Well we're in Aylstone now, there are some old Victorian houses here, and uh, some newer ones as well. And we passed what must have been the mill stream in times gone by. Um, Aylstone Mill Lock was the last lock we went through. So there's some new houses here, but most of them are older. Just coming up is a bit of warehousing that looks like it might have been canal related at some point in the distant past. Obviously no longer, but they might have had moorings and unloading and loading on here of goods as possible. Lots of meanders in the river here. It really does show its true character as a river rather than the canal. Here's some real industry. Dyeing. That's what Leicester was famous for. Dyers and Finishes Limited. Look at that, it's real industry, still going strong. That's a fairly new building. Right, so this is now uh, St Mary's Mill Lock. And this looks proper industrial. Old Victorian warehouses and stuff like that. So we're now coming into proper industrial Leicester. So being with these guys has probably doubled my speed and I've had to speed them up a little as well, I hope. But they're great, really nice people from the Coventry Cruising Club. So here's some major old Victorian Leicester industry. I see lights on inside, so they're obviously still in use for something. And some 
amazing graffiti as well. At this point on the river we're going under the railway line and just past the railway line is this massive weir that we've been told to keep to the left of. Um, it's unprotected so you really need to go past it fast and keep well left. There indeed is the weir, the unprotected weir, you could go down that uh, and have a disaster. And there's the football ground, the stadium just to the right of us. And the lock, um, which is the Freeman's Meadow lock, is a different kind of lock. It's got a proper big walkover bridge on this side. And there's some uh, housing on the left there, by the pylons. Actually the river's quite calm today, it doesn't look too bad at all. But I still wouldn't want, wouldn't want to end up going over the weir. And there is Leicester City Football Stadium. For those that are interested. And the weir has quite a drop and it is completely unprotected, as you can see. These gate paddles are totally unprotected and they are pretty wild. Look at that boiling in there. So that's the weir starting to flow again after we fill the lock. And we're coming out onto the proper river saw below the big weir. Lock 41, Freeman's Meadow Lock. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. Hopefully it was in focus. And now we're going to crack on up through the centre of Leicester. Obviously this little bridge here led into a wharf at some time in the past. A um, little arm into some industry. But I can't quite believe it, we're actually... I can't quite believe I've got this far to be honest. We're heading up through the centre of Leicester, it's crazy isn't it? I mean, I'm right up in the Midlands. There we go, look. A oh, rowing club, okay. Well, once upon a time, this would have been uh, an industrial area. And I'm sure the bridge didn't always look like that. I'm sure it would have allowed access for barges to unload. Leicester Rowing Club, okay. And we just press on. Looks as though the bridges aren't going to be high enough to clear the canopy, but uh, I get out and check them all and they're all okay. That's bridge 109A, Swan Bridge. There's a lot of weed here. Even down the middle, it's across the entire river. There's no avoiding it. Both sides, look. Well, these must be the ornate bridges they tell you about as you approach Leicester. And they are ornate. So, coming up here on the right must be the pontoons they are telling you about that you can walk on. Uh, safely in Leicester. But sadly, it looks as though they're all taken. So we'll just 
carry on through. Here's a nice bridge. I'll take the right hand span. Here on the right there's some huge new buildings going up. Probably flats like these ones. Uh, can't imagine it's particularly pleasant living in somewhere like that. And on the right here are the remains of some canal side industry in the distance. That is a massive construction site. Alongside the old uh, wharf building is some mooring. Well it's six o'clock, we stopped about an hour ago. We're moored up by the pump house uh, moorings, visitor moorings, uh, in the middle of Leicester. Which is great, there's a floating pontoon here with um, no access to the public so it's quite safe and uh, yeah here we are. <laughs>